Tunzu is a labor of love, a labor of love that I've been at for several years now alongside the team of people. It's taken a while to get here. So I can't wait to share this with everybody and uh, see you when we open. Of habaneros and I'm proud of my heritage, diverse as its people, its tribe, its cultures. I'm very proud of my heritage and my upbringing and my culture and the things that I eat and the things my grandmother ate, my mother ate, my father's mother ate. I believe very much in the foods that I grew up eating. I think our jollof rice, our peppered grilled chicken, our moi moi, and all of that good stuff. I believe we ought to share that with the world. Dundu is delicious. It's authentic, it's genuinely African, but it's not afraid to be modern. It's an homage to my heritage as a Nigerian. I think Dundu is me telling my own, um, my own story of Africa through food. That's what Dundu is. There's no reason why all of our food on the African continent, particularly Nigerian food, shouldn't travel and have the awareness and recognition that several cuisines in the West here have. Tundu is a labor of love. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for joining me. Hi, if you're just joining, my name is Adiola Fayon, and today I am interviewing the founder of Dundu Restaurant in New York City, Folusha Salami. Welcome to my show. Thank you, Diola, for having me. I'm so honored. Thank you. You look good. And this your t-shirt. How can you get it for us? We are representing now. You see, I kept playing that your video about how Nigerian food, there's nothing wrong in Nigerian food being everywhere, just like we have foods from other cultures, from other nationalities Absolutely. as well. So my sister is on a quest to put Nigerian food on the map of where they find all this other uh, food from fancy, all, the, all this other fancy food from other countries. Yes. There yes. should also be Nigerian food. Like, you know, McDonald's is everywhere. Why can't we have jollof rice everywhere? Jollof rice everywhere. Oh, you get the memo. So thank you so much for joining me today. Real quick, for those who do not know who you are, just tell them a little bit about your story. And then we'll get into our question and answers. Today's title is all about turning your passion into profit okay because that's what well, thank you for thank <laughs> you for having me i'm so honored and um to be yeah. included amongst the great lineup of people um that you have here today thank you so much so my name is fulusha salami i am the founder of dundu dundu is a fast casual restaurant in midtown manhattan um we serve a limited menu of salads proteins grains and sides we offer delicious, authentic Nigerian food in a way that is very relatable. Um, Dundu started after I graduated from the Culinary Institute of America shortly afterwards. Um, I'm passionate about this, but beyond passion, I'm also being very deliberate about it. Um, I grew up in Ilori. I'm the child of um, prof uh, a professor and um, a high school teacher turned um, educator who worked in the department ministry of um, education back home in Ilori. Um, I'm the youngest of six, six siblings. I'm a mother, I'm a wife, and uh, I run Dundu in a nutshell. Thank you so much. You know, you know, we, have, you know we have a lot in common. We'll, we'll talk after the service. <laughs> um <laughs> first of all for those who you refuse to mention the fact that you used to be an attorney oh <laughs> okay. so i used to be you an attorney at some point in my life it's okay. important that i mention that um i switched careers before i moved here to um Adela, can you help me i can't see you i'm seeing myself it's okay people okay. are seeing you you are seeing what people are seeing it's oh okay. right. no worries <laughs> Yes, the, yes, you know, my guest of honor. We want to see you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I used to, I began my career um, as an oil and gas attorney. I worked with Shell Oil, and um, after a while, I quit that role. I wasn't there for too long, actually. I've always wanted to own my own business. I enjoy cooking. The business end of things also intrigues me a lot. And um, when the time was right, which I'll delve into a little later, I quit my job. I packed up my bags. I enrolled in culinary school, um, the Culinary Institute of America here in New York in Hyde Park. And that was the beginning of my journey as an immigrant here in America. 
Wow, thank you so much. And I'm so happy that you talked about that because for you, yes, you went to school, yes, you studied law and you were you had a really good job, a lucrative job that some people could only dream of. I mean, Shell is a very, <laughs> uh, they pay well. But for you, cooking and especially Nigerian food has always been a passion right from the time you were young and your neighbor introduced you to Dundu, right? Yes. My so neighbor. Your neighbor, Ife? Ife, Ife Oluwa Femi. I hear she's in the UK somewhere. Ife is responsible for where we are today because Ife <laughs> told us about that Mama Poots place. Mama where Poots, uh, Dundu. For those who may not speak Yoruba, what is Dundu? So dundu is fried yams. It's made from not what we call yams here in the States. Those are sweet potatoes, but actual tubers. Some of them weigh between yes. about two pounds to 11 pounds. Yes. And it's called issue in Yoruba. So okay. dundu is when you peel those and you fry them and cut them off. So the first time I experienced it was not in our home. It was by the roadside, like Adiola mentioned, a neighbor who lived across the street. I went to theirs and she was, you know, munching on something. It was in, you know, old newspapers. And she kept munching on it. And I said, Ife, um, I said to her, you're back in the end, which means what's that? And she said, oh, it's Dundu. I said, what's Dundu? She goes, it's fried yam. There's a lady, if we walk to the main road, she's frying and selling that. So I said, oh, I have, I have um, one Naira. So she goes, each one is 10 Kobo, which was a long time ago. So we walked all the way to the road. I think I was about seven at this time. Never mind that I did not have permission. So we went there. There was this woman frying the yam. She had this bright red colored sauce, which I learned was atadini. So she would fry the yam, scoop it up with a huge frying spider, and then she'll put a little newspaper and scoop some of that bright red sauce on it. And when I tasted it, it was delicious. Um, mm. For real. It was. It was <laughs> very good. So Fried that was yam. the experience. Fried yam. It's, it's <laughs> actually one of my best. So yeah. anytime I visit your restaurant, I must see eat dundu. But the reason why we're talking to you today is because even though this has been a passion of yours since you were seven, um, eventually you, it became a reality for you to own your own dundu restaurant. And it's still your dream to own a chain of Dundu restaurants yes. across the world, which we are praying that it will come to pass because you are representing us Nigerians in a positive light. Mm -hmm. And we really appreciate that. So, but tell us how you were able to, uh, it's a very broad question, you know, turning your passion mm -hmm. into, um, when you first of all decided that you wanted to do this, what was the reaction of, how, how were you sure, first of all, that you know this is what you should do? What was the reaction of people around you? You said in one of your videos that um, you were being taunted that um, with a law degree, Ufema law, law Akara, you want to go and be frying Akara. <laughs> and, and Dodo, yes, you want to start frying Dodo and Akara. After going through law school, getting a job with Shell, how was that like and how were you able to stick to your dream of you know doing this okay so to take us back a bit at seven i didn't know i wanted to be in food to be candid um that was just my first experience with fried yams uh, as a child i wanted to be an attorney so i went to law school went to college did the whole haul and i became an attorney and I'm not one of those who didn't enjoy it. I actually liked it very much. It's just that I happen to like what I'm doing now a lot more. Um, so how did I quit? I think that um, the business end of things intrigues me a lot. And I recognize, I've, I've always admired other businesses. When I was dating my husband, um, when we were dating then, what I wanted and what my interest like was to read business biographies. So I would read the story of McDonald's, Starbucks, Wendy, you know, Chick-fil-A. You just think about it. I've read all those bi business biographies. And that further ignited my passion that I really can do this. And I enjoy food. I like cooking. And I, I thought to myself, why can't I do with um, jollof rice what they've done with fries and with McDonald's? And um, I think that was where it started. So... The first thing I did was to, after reading a number of books, I started finding out where can I get the proper education that I need? 
to be able to do this. And education doesn't always have to be, you know, you going to formal school. No, it might be research, it might be online education for you. It varies with different individuals. So once I realized I was clear I could get a degree in this, you know, learn how to manage a restaurant and also get formal culinary training, I found the right school and I enrolled um, for me. I was able to do that because I'd worked for a bit. I had some savings and I was also, I had the support of my spouse and, and of my family. And that was how I made the decision. I think if you're someone who you're considering, should I be switching from my main job to focus on my side hustle full time, there are a couple of things you should do. You want to make sure that you have the required knowledge. That would not, there's nothing um, you can actually do without taking the time to study, to educate yourself and get the required knowledge to be, to be um, successful. You also have to be practical. You have to be practical in the sense that, you know, how are you going to meet your needs? How are you going to meet if you're a parent or if you have people or, who are dependent on you or you have responsibilities? You have to consider all of that. More importantly, is, is your business showing traction? So let's say you have the side hustle and there are people already who you have repeat customers. They're coming back to you. They're asking for extended services. Say you design websites and you design great websites. Now your customers are coming back to you for site optimization. They're coming back to you to increase, you know, help them with search engine optimization, help them with more um, tech related things. Definitely your business is showing traction. You're seeing that there's an opportunity for you to, to do more in that area. So, and of course you also want to, um, you want to know what the KPIs of your business are like, what are the major things, the major key performance indicators that can tell you, oh, this, there's an opportunity here. So for Dundu, after I left culinary school, I got a job in fine dining um, and I did that a while. So we started Dundu out of commercial kitchens. Um, commercial kitchens are this shared space where you would pay for a couple of hours to use it. We would do all of our cooking there. We would put everything in Cambros and then in Ubers. <laughs> this was a long time ago. We would move it to various pop-up markets or to a catering event and so on and so forth. So we, we really started small with what it is that, um, that we had. So figure out, is there an opportunity here? What is the minimum viable product you can start with? Like, where can you start from? Put that out there, Put, do the very best you can with it. And you get, once you see traction, once there's an opportunity, you see there's an opportunity in the market for it, then everybody's situation is different. You learn when to, the more traction you get, then you learn when it's time to switch. So, so in other words, you didn't just quit your job. You started gradually. Also, when you quit your job, you actually went to culinary school. I did. To yeah, I started learn. gradually. Let me actually be clear on this. Before I left Nigeria at all, I had something I called Sisi Puts. <laughs> Sisi Puts. So Sisi Puts. Like and mama puts. Yes, like Mama Puts, exactly. And what was and I had a full time job at that time. But on Fridays, I would go to the market alongside with a woman who helped me. We would buy the ingredients. I would cook. I would pack them in bowls, and I made these stickers of a girl holding a spoon called Sissy Boot. And I would make a four year old and stews. And I would spend my Saturdays and Sundays delivering these stews and soups to people. That was where the idea to even go to culinary school came from. And my colleagues would teach, tease me then and say, Felicia's Kitchen, you know. But I did that, and I figured out, I can take this beyond here. Um, and that was it. So, and I went to culinary school. You, decided, you, can, you can do this even beyond the shores of Nigeria. But I think the first lesson for me in your story is the fact that even though you had a law degree and you've been a professional practicing for some years, you went back to school for what you are passionate about. You didn't just quit and move into this business you wanted to do it right i mean yeah, absolutely. You, you have to study um you have to study to show yourself approved i believe that's what the word says you have to commit to excellence um it's important to pray you god can order god will order your steps i'm a, I'm a person of faith as well but so i'm um, committing to excellence and discipline and learning your scrap your craft and developing your skills 
Prayer will never take the place of that. You have to be disciplined. You have to be consistent. And you really have to learn. Be teachable. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. There's always room to learn. That has helped me a lot as a person. And for those who may not be here when I played her video earlier, I just wanted you to see um, the picture of when she finished uh, culinary school. That's her. And I think this was your graduation day. Yes, it was. And this is also you. I'm I'm showing this so that they know you had a little baby at the oh, time. Oh yes, I have a little daughter. She's she you. <laughs> yeah. And she's much older now. But true story. After I quit my job and I moved to and I moved to the states a week before I started culinary school, I realized I was pregnant. But I then rolled. I'd left. <laughs> I had the road, so I had to keep going, and I wasn't showing. So I went ahead and I did the program for as far as I could before I had to pop. Then I to <laughs> and you told me there was one class that started at three something a.m. Yes. So we um, there's a um, a block called breakfast, and I happened to be in the a.m. slot, which meant that at that time we would get up at three a.m. You would get up at three a.m. You will prepare for those coming in to eat at 7 a.m. and also have your so the way the Culinary Institute of America works, you have your core academic um, program like you would in regular college, and then at that time in the associates program, which I was in, you had a thousand kitchen hours. So we would do that. I would do that, you know, when I when I was in that block. It lasted all of three weeks. It wasn't throughout the program, but those were some of the things I just had to roll with. Okay, that in itself shows dedication. That So first of all, it's not enough to have an idea or to have passion for a business. The discipline is what actually makes it work. And yeah. that's what I wanted to talk about in, uh, next. Some of the disciplines that you had to cultivate for you to be where you are today and, and how long it took, because I'm pretty sure, I mean, now your daughter is how old? She's going to be 13 in October. The same one that we saw in the that. The same one in the picture, because I, I did, couldn't put her down that graduation day, so I don't have a personal picture. I carried her everywhere. So this journey has been on for years, literally. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, sometimes when people see people doing well, they're like, oh, when did he or she, you know, they started oh, yesterday or something. They had, Sometimes they have no idea that, you know, this person has been at it for a long time. So what were some of the disciplines that you had to cultivate? I'm going to start letting people in soon so that they can ask you their own questions. But what were some of the disciplines that you had to cultivate for you to be where you are today? Okay. So I think that um, you started with passion. So I'll take it in two bits, right? It's important to be passionate about what you want to do. I'm very passionate about food and Nigerian food. But beyond passion, you need discipline. Because if passion is all you have, when the going gets tough, you're not going to be able to hang in there. So some of the things that has worked for me very well is being disciplined and being persistent. I am a persistent person. In fact, my middle name should be persistence. I, the ability to stay with something and to focus, learn your skill, focus on this one thing. There'll be challenges. There'll be, you know, you may want, don't get distracted. If there's something you're sure is a good idea, you may have to tweak it you may have to improve it or, you know, turn it around a bit, fiddle with it a bit, or you have to be focused, you have to be persistent, you have to be disciplined, you have to be disciplined with your savings. So, for example, don't just start with savings, you have to be able to set some money aside from your business or from your personal finances to be, to be able to start uh, whatever your passion or this side hustle that you want to translate into a business is. You have to be disciplined with your numbers you have to keep records detailed financial records you also want to learn i can't emphasize enough and also observing people who have done this before um i'll speak a bit more about mentors and um and uh, having role models but one of the things that really worked for me as an individual i'm an avid reader um a bit of a nerd to be honest <laughs> i read a lot of books i enjoy reading so Find role models. They don't exactly, I know many people also want mentors. In my mind, the way I think about it, mentors are people you're able to, to talk to one-on-one. -on -one. They understand your specific situation and 
you can call them, they can give you feedback. I had a couple of those in my life, people like Lauren Bailey or Alice Elliott or, or Leo Kramer, who I'm very thankful for. But some of the people you learn the most of from are role models. They may not know you. They've written a book. You've read their story, their YouTube videos of them. Watch it. Learn from it. Then take the information learned and apply it to your own specific situation. No two situations are alike, but there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of knowledge. Be open. Nobody knows it all. So take the information from those role models, read every book you can, listen to, you know, watch the right videos, learn about your industry, for example. That's something else I have to do. What are the regulations that, you know, that manage or govern your industry? What are the licenses you would need in the specific market or area that you are? Study, discipline yourself, commit to it. In some ways, it's like birthing a child. Um, my husband's big joke is that we have three children and we actually have two. But he says, oh, you know, having Dundu is like having a third child. And <laughs> when we have two and that now we're stuck with three children and the third one is not even human. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is that's what it takes from you. So being able to just focus, what do I want to do? Get knowledge, get information, improve yourself, study those who have done similar. It may, you don't have to copy them, no. It's your own journey, but you can learn from their experiences. You can learn from the steps they've taken. Don't make the same mistakes they've made. Believe me, you make yours. So you're better off learning from the mistakes of others and helping yourself to improve in that way. I think those are some of the key uh, things that has helped me as a person. And I really do value relationships. Everything you need, everything you need to learn, there's a human somewhere who has knowledge of it, who has experienced it, or who can give you the right information. So value relationships. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'm not sure who's watching today, but you know, if you have passion for something, maybe you have a full-time job and you're thinking about starting a side hustle or a business, Maybe there's something that you're really uh, passionate about. It doesn't mean you don't like your job, but you prefer doing that. Just like she said, she enjoyed um, being an attorney, but she had more passion for Nigerian food to be specific, not just food. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you don't like what you do and you would rather be doing something else. I'm hoping that this could be of help to you. From the things you talked about in terms of the disciplines that you had to cultivate, you mentioned saving money. This is one of the things that we have tried to hammer a lot on this show. And, you know, sometimes people would say things like, well, I'm not even making enough. How can you tell me to save from what I'm making? But based on what you said, if you really want it, it becomes a priority. Uh, the last guest we had said you should treat your savings like a bill. Yes. You know how you... You, you have to pay yourself. Somehow, somehow you always meet your bills. So when it comes to saving money as well, you have to meet that as well, especially if you want to start your own business. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've gotten a number of comments from from some people. Um, the, the first one is from Lick uh, Allison, who just moved out of New York, and he's upset because uh, he would have loved to visit Stundu, but he said next time uh, he's, in, he's in New York. And this one is from Elliot Ono. I'm in Connecticut. I come to the city a lot. Please, can you send me your, your restaurant address? So that's why I've been putting it on the on the screen. I don't get to eat Nigerian food that much. I left Nigeria 47 years ago. So now he knows um, your store, your restaurant, I mean, is actually a two minute walk from the Chrysler building, right? Yes, yes. We're close to Grand Central. You, you can't meet it. Grand Central. Yeah. Close to the Nigerian Embassy as well. Yeah. So if, if anybody's going to the Nigerian Embassy to renew their passport or something, hey, you, you have a, a place to eat. Uh, Falasha Defari is taking notes, literally. She talked about discipline, diligence uh, required. And um, Adebayo Ojo. Chito says, kindly add dodo to it. It's a good combination, but you already do, right? You already we have dodo. We have dodo. <laughs> you already have dodo. Uh, this is a question from David Adepoya. Could you ask what part her husband played in this story and how did she manage the transition from law 
to school and to her business. And then I'm going to post the link. After she answers this question, I'll post the link for people to join us in the studio so that they can um, ask you questions directly. But maybe you can start with this one from David. Okay. Um, so um, my husband, uh, my husband's name is Tosi. We've been married a long while now. I think that uh, I'm fortunate to be married to my friend, first of all. So that makes a huge difference, difference for me. Um, Tosi was very supportive. He's always been very supportive of me. I think what helped us the most, though, in us switching careers is communication. Um, we talked about everything. If you have a spouse or uh, a partner and you're switching careers, it's important for, um, it's very helpful, let me say, for you to have the support of that individual. Because, uh, for example, when he married me, I was an attorney. Uh, you know, working in an oil company. Now I sell rice and dodo. <laughs> so, um, you know, sometimes it requires both discipline and um, the support of the person you're with. It may, it may mean tightening your belt and making some sacrifices so that you guys can achieve that dream. It's also important to communicate to your partner what kind of help you need, which I've been able to, we talk about everything. So that has been very helpful for me. I'm also a mother, so having a partner who is willing to pitch in, my husband is in totally another line of work, but us being able to support each other because there are times when I can't be there for my girls like I used to be, and he's the one who picks up the slack. And there are times because of what he does, he's not able to be there. So being able to support each other in that way is very, very important. And sometimes even just the emotional support, because you will get in difficult times. And it doesn't have to be a spouse. It could be a sister, a brother, a family member who's truly rooting for you. And when the times are, are rough, can say to you, just hang in there. Um, at your life, I may share a personal example. So shortly before um, the pandemic, we had started looking for a space for Dundu and I'd searched for many months alongside my realtor. And we found the space, uh, we had gotten into negotiations with the, with the um, landlord for it. I'd hired an attorney, we'd spent over $5,000 in negotiating attorney fees. And we, were, we had redlined the document. Basically what that means is we were ready to just fine tune, final reading, everybody sign, give us keys so we can start selling jollof rice after we renovate the space. To cut the long story short, about three a week to the final signing, the landlord opts out of the deal. Cold turkey, no reason, no explanation. My spirit was broken. And we had been on this process for three months and the landlord just opted out like that. No reason, no explanation, like I said, as you would expect. I was highly disappointed and highly, <laughs> I was pained. At that time, I already had a few, you know, um, partners in the business. What was I going to go back and tell them that we didn't have this space, that we had not searched for anything since November? But I remember um, I'm a person of faith and it was divine because about three weeks after that, COVID-19 hit and they shut everywhere down. Mm. When COVID hit, I was devastated. I would cry. <laughs> My eyes would... <laughs> My eyes would be big, and I remember my husband would say to me, look at me, only two things can happen here. They are either going to give you this space back, or you are going to get a better place at a better price. Along with Shobaka, which literally translates that God is not a wicked God. You know, you've been so diligent. Just stay the cause. And I'm telling you, that's exactly what happened. After the pandemic, we found a better place in a better location, a better building at a better price. So sometimes if you're going through challenges, just having that person who sticks with you and supports you and understands what you are going through, and not all support is about money, you know? Marry your best friend. Marry your friend. Or marry your very close friend and stay friends. Who said that? <laughs> Me. You did. You did. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but it, it actually matters because... Yeah. I, I don't know why that person asked the question, but who yeah, you're married yeah. to can, I, can either uh, make or marry you? Like, it can. It can. Some, it can. Even if you don't have it, it doesn't mean you can't go on this journey. 
even if you don't have that kind of support. You do oh, need. You do need it, though, if you have it. But sometimes we have to, uh, if in a situation where you don't have that, that shouldn't stop you. You may find your support or encouragement from a parent, a sibling, a dear friend, and building your own support community. I happen to live away from most of my siblings and my husband's sibling as well. And we've built our own family of friends around us here. So be deliberate in your relationships and God will, God always I, comes through for you. Kudos to you, kudos to your husband, because you've been able to work together to, to do what you're doing today. Um, there's something that you mentioned that I want us to go into real quick. And then I'm posting the link as a, the way I'm posting comments on the screen. Mm -hmm. But just so you know, Fire, Fire Kemi Bam says that she's learning a lot and this is really timely for her because she just had it something like that Hi, so, Fire Kemi. literally she wants to thank you not <laughs> not me um also amos uh, says that this has been very inspiring and insightful that learning that a business is like a child mm -hmm. and it requires full attention to and i really like this comment by the venerable who says prayer cannot replace excellence and discipline, which is what you had mentioned. Um, uh, and then this person, David Adikoya says a, a supportive partner is like healing to your body. When, when you marry the right person, they want you to thrive. They want you to be the best that you can be. Mm -hmm. They are not in competition with you. You are not in competition mm -hmm. with them. You see. And you both win. Why be in competition? Why are you together? You both win. <laughs> you you win together. Yeah, yeah, you see yourselves as a team and you work together. But real quick, um, for some somehow you have been able to turn frying dodo, frying akara, frying dundu into not just a business, but you even have partners, you have investors. Some people would not think about, you know, will I be able to find investors for flying dodo? A lot of people, when they think we about more, we cook more than dodo, Giola. we sell salads and jollof friends. Your selling point, Auntie Folusho Dundu, <laughs> your selling point is Dundu, and you found investors for Dundu in America. That is a, a a thing to be proud of. You know, Thank some you people don't that. even some people believe it only if you're starting like a tech company that you mm -hmm. should look for partners or investors. Do you mind talking a little bit about that in a situation where money is tight and you know that this thing has huge uh, potential and it could be successful? We can have chain of restaurants. You know, how did you navigate that? And if there's someone that is taking note today. Who has an idea um like this person cynthia says my life story at this particular moment almost signed a space deal and boom everything went sour really trusting god to come through for me at this moment but this person has a business idea um are you telling me first of all that there is no business idea that we can find funding for and how exactly do you find funding and partners and investors Okay, so before, um, I'll take the funding question, but let me just say something. Before you start seeking funding, there are one or two things that you must have in place for your business. You must understand how your business is going to make money. I mentioned earlier about knowing your KPIs. You know, what are the essential things? For me in food, for example, what's my food cost? What's my rent cost going to be? What are your prime costs? What are the expenses? And what are the things, cash flow, what are the things that would drive this business to success? Number two, before you think about investors, please put systems in place. Put systems in place. I can't emphasize it enough. Systems is what will cause any business to succeed. Um, brands that we acquire, um, admire, like um, Coca-Cola or Nike, is because they put systems in place so they can produce good products consistently. So even as a small business, we don't do very much. It's a small business. We won't always be a small business, um, but we put in place systems. All of our recipes are standardized. There is a system for, for picking phone calls at Dundu. You don't pick up and say, eh, you know, systemize things. What happens when we receive goat leg at Dundu to process? 
there's a butcher space and there's a protocol for bro breaking down goat leg and dundu. You must remove the meat on the bone first. You must separate the extra fat. You must weigh the, the waste. You must weigh this. You must write the output. You must complete the inventory sheet. Don't just fly by the seat of your pants. Document your recipes. Our recipes are detailed to the point of this is how you peel the plantain. This is how you half it. This is how you break it into bits and pieces. This is how she peels her plantain. No, she oh. has a map. I hope you guys can see it. Yeah, this is actually um, one of the prep cards from Dundu. You see how this, how detailed this is? It tells you what tools you need. It tells you what to gather, how to cook, how to refrigerate. There's another card that shows you how to how to even fry the actual plantain at what temperature. So create systems. You can't commit to excellence enough. Um, when I was testing recipes for Dundu, I mean, I've been frying akara for years, since secondary school. But I never knew what the temperature for frying akara was. I was doing it the way I was taught. You drop a little piece, you figure it out. But if you want to, you know, you want to standardize it and you want anybody to be able to fry the akara, guess what? I had to figure out the temperature. So for one weekend in my house here, Tosi and our, and our daughters, ah, they ate shege in akara. I kept frying. <laughs> at different temperatures till I perfected it and it was something that we could start and finish for guests in like a five minute window. So you have to do things like that. Don't so think so why, why do you do that? Why are you so detail oriented? So that every customer tastes the same thing or so consistency. Our food is I'm not sorry, just delicious. It, it must be consistent. It must be the same way. So I, I don't drink soda. Um um, but I used to as a child, but what I do know about soda is it tastes the same every single time people pop it open. That's the promise of consistency. That's what makes for good brands. So even though we're still very much a small business, I don't think short term. I play the long game. I'm not thinking about a quick fix for now. Where is it that we want to go? So we're acting like where we want to go while we're on our way there. Even before we get there, start acting like it now. So, no offense, but we don't always do that at Nigerian restaurants. I mean, when I visit Nigerian restaurants, this is new for me. You are saying what the last customer ate is exactly what the next customer will get. That's the only way to replicate it if you want to grow. And wow. the systems are not perfect yet, but being able to follow it. So the way we make the chicken stock that goes into our jollof rice, we make it in batches. We do 20 pounds of bones per time. So the jollof rice can be consistent. You shouldn't come on Monday and it's cooked the way Jalil wants. That's one of the guys on my team. And you come on Wednesday and it's cooked by Dewey. Or you come on Friday and it's cooked by me, FS, and it tastes different. Why should you come back next week? So with or without you there, we're getting the same quality. Of yes, that's the idea. I'm there often. I'm there all the time. But I, the idea is for me to be able to put in systems and for have people follow those systems, it's people that will execute it. But if you don't have the system, what do you even want to rely on? So me, let's say you have, we're on the same team. You, you like salt. Me, I don't like salt. So when Mr. A comes today, salty, tomorrow, no salt in the food. Uh -uh. How will Mr. A feel? He'll go somewhere else. That is the number one major concern with some Nigerian restaurants. Look at what David Adukoya said. He said, these are the things we don't take seriously as Africans. It's refreshing to see that you're doing this. Yeah. And I, real quick, I just want to thank the same David Adukoya donated $30, $30 to me. Thank you so much because of this interview. Thank you, Mr. David Adukoya. Oh, you sure. didn't have to, but I, I really, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And if you're watching this and you are enjoying it, especially as we're getting into all these details of being concise, precise, and consistent, consistent <laughs> please and please share this as you're watching it on your social media platform. If you're watching it on Facebook, just click share. Or if you're watching on YouTube, just uh, click the share button and copy the link, put it on your social media platforms so that more people can hopefully join us. So I'm really, really impressed uh, mm -hmm. by this consistency and i can imagine you had to train all your workers to be on the same page and as a matter of fact following you on instagram when you were getting ready to launch you were in your restaurant for weeks like maybe one or two weeks 
Yeah, about 10 days, just training without oh, being open to the for staff. 10 days, so okay. Obvious. Yes. Training okay. staff. Before this, Madam launched. <laughs> and we were paying rent. So it wasn't, and we're not, you it's know, it's a small it's business. It's paid, days. Yeah. But as again, in, long game, long term. The, the 10 days was as if she was open, but she wasn't open. Because I remember you had to let people know, no, we're not open yet. We're yes. just uh, getting ready. And in that 10 days, you were training your workers, you were cooking, you were doing things as if the restaurant was open, even oh, though it yeah. wasn't, mm -hmm. teaching them how to relate with customers and so on. I saw them like doing all kinds of exercises. We were asking them how to pronounce. At a dindi. At, at, at we, pronounce also play. we also play a lot. You know that it's, it's, it's refreshing to see that you're doing this, but it also shows how committed you are, how detailed mm -hmm. you are, and how much you are after excellence. Yes. You just open the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Had 10 days of training. So that's amazing. Um, I'm posting the link right the now. The thing, if I may mention, why you want to put in place consistency and systems, regardless of what industry or what your business is about is, if you don't have that, you can't even make smart, smart business decisions. So, for example, when we receive goat leg, you know, SNO now, if you're Nigerian, I, I don't know how to say that in household Igbo, but a certain percentage, about 50% of the weight is bones, right? So if you're not consistent and you don't know what the meat ought to yield, you know, you buy it as 20 pounds and about 10 pounds of it is bone that you cannot use. You need to know what the yield ought to be. If not, how do you know how to price the goats or how to sell the goats to you? So you need all of these systems in place. And then it's easier also to manage people if you've told them what to do. You can't be on, my, on, on the team at Dundu now and you cut the plantain like we used to cut it for my dad. Professor Bangui, you can't do that. Do you know how we cut it at Kanango? You know how we cut? Yeah, that's how I was taught to cut it. If you cut that in Dundu now, you and I, or you and the lead cook, you will have an issue. Because we put picture there, we wrote it there, Akilotunku. Please. So I've posted the link if you would like to join us in the studio to ask our questions. And real quick, I just wanted to read this comment by Yomi Olayinka. He says, I wish I can come for a taste of your food. I think that's what he's trying to say. I visit Nigerian restaurants a lot, but their food differs in taste every time. Well, we hope you come. <laughs> so um i really really like this that you know you're mm -hmm. maintaining consistency so i just posted the link if anybody would like to join us please uh follow that link on the screen and then you will be able to join us there's also a comment from bridget chigosi who says i admire your spirit of excellence oh, um honestly th that just shows how committed you are thank to you, excellence bridget. so i i really i really appreciate that as well myself and while I'm waiting for people to um, ask their questions, you've spoken about one of the challenges that you had to face, which was losing the first place that you had thought that you would use. Um, how is it like finding the right people to work with, keeping the right people? How do you treat workers in a way that you get to have the best out of them? Um, mm -hmm. And to have them being devoted and all. So I have a number of people in the studio, but a couple of them, your cameras are not up. So I would need to let you out if your cameras are not up. It says your devices are not connected. The Sam, your devices are not connected. So please try to do something about that. Bernie and Agbo, your camera is not up. So please try to work on that. So real quick, how do you um, find the right people to work with you and to get them to always be motivated, you know, to, mm -hmm. to work. I've, I've seen videos of your workers. They are like happy to be there. Thank you. Um, so I think, um, I think relationships are important. When I hire and um, when we hire Dundu, we tend to hire first for attitude and for the individual as a person. Um, like any other relationship, I think, treating people with respect i we can train you we can offer you skills of course you have to have standard professional cooking experience or front of the house experience as a server but we can help you improve those things but you the attitude of the person 
um, understanding what the person's in interest and then seeing the person first as a human, I think is very important. If you're a reader, one book I read on hiring that totally changed the game for me is called Who, W-H-O by Jeff Smart. His Jeff is spelled G-E-O-F-F. His last name is Smart. Um, so I would recommend that as a reading for you. But we hire first for attitude and then treat your people with respect. Treat them with kindness. I don't see the people on my team as, um, in many ways, I work for them because, you know, I can't do the work of Dundwe alone. No matter how great I make jollof rice, I need these people. So treat your people with respect. See them as humans. Be kind. It doesn't mean you're not firm. I'm a very firm leader. And um, there may be, even be times you may have to let someone off the team or let them go. It doesn't mean they're a bad person. It just means they may not be a fit for your team. But treat your people with respect. Show them kindness and do right. I'm a person of faith. Um, I'm not just a business owner. I'm a Christian. And that matters to me. So, you know, why well, about just decency and kindness to the other person and treating them the way you want to be treated? So use hiring platforms to find the right people. Um, we tend to use Indeed. Um, we use word of mouth. Good team members also bring new team members. So if you have great team members, absolutely tell them you're hiring. They they bring a cousin. They they bring a friend. You know, and then make develop the culture of the place. Let people be. I spend half of my life at Dundu, and I say to my team often, I don't want to be miserable for half of my life. So if I'm spending half of my waking hours here every day, you don't have to be friends, but you have to be kind and you have to treat each other with respect. Plus, you can't pour out of an empty cup. So if there is no respect and kindness and some level of happiness within the team, guess what? They're not going to pass it on to your guests. If your cup is empty, what are you going to pour out? Nothing. <laughs> wow, thank you so much. Yes, I want to start taking guests and I'm just reading a few comments real quick. Uh, a couple of people have been asking if Dundu is a franchise and also Bodjet Chigosi says I admire your spirit of excellence. Mm -hmm. um, Adeola Olu Winners is also asking about whether it's a franchise. Mm -hmm. and Not. Paul, anyway, <laughs> it's not okay. Paul Lamotesha says success isn't always about greatness, it's about consistency. Thank you so much for that. And, um, Omar Gene Tiboti, a lot of people just admire your spirit of excellence. Thank you, and, I'm so grateful. Thank you, <laughs> Christiana. Is saying you are very intelligent, God will prosper you massively. Someone is asking why your Instagram page is private, is it? I don't think it is. No, Do it's not. It's not okay. Mm -hmm. And you know, My I'm personal saving, and the business isn't. Um, I'm saving this question for last, we will still come back to it. But I have my brother here. David Adekoya, please tell us where you're calling from and what your question is. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, David. Hello, 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 hello. Um, thank you very, very much uh, for um, this very informative and insightful uh, interview. Um, I'm calling from Australia. Um, it's actually uh, the interview started at 5 a.m. Australian yeah. time. And... Uh, we're already uh, on Monday wow. in Australia, so well, thank you. I, <laughs> thank you. So I was just, I was just uh, waiting for the link so I can uh, call in and um, and go and prepare for work. Uh, I'm a chemical engineer by trade, uh, and um, I work in the energy field. Um, I. I, I really, well, let me first start by saying, I would just like to uh, employ everyone who is listening to this interview to please um, go and like the video and um, share it and subscribe to Adiola's channel. Uh, it's free, she didn't pay me to do it, so thank I'm just you. doing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to come back to Australia just to thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm just doing it because I think it's something that we need to um, learn more to do as Nigerians, um, to support each other, not just in the words of our mouth, but in our actions as well. Um, and I just call in to say, you know, they're, they're actually in, 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 uh, in my city, uh, in my state, in Australia, in Queensland, um, 
there's a there's no Nigerian restaurant, but in the big city like Sydney, there 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 is a Nigerian restaurant there. So I've got a friend who is like uh, someone who looks up to me, and he's planning to start a Nigerian restaurant. He, he has a Nigerian restaurant uh, in Nigeria, and he's been trying to start one. So he's been asking me for professional advice. Um, so I, I've been an engineer for uh, some years now, and um, I just give him some information. The first meeting we had, uh, just to speed things up, you know, he talked about how he wants to start this restaurant. You know, he wants to do, you know, Nigerian food in, in a way that is uh, appealing for uh, Westerners and, and, and Australians in particular and things like that, you know. So he had a lot of good ideas, how he wants to do his gizdo, do, how he wants to do his jollof rice and all these things, you know. So, you know, me personally, Particularly, you know, I, I think restaurant is more than the food. And I think that's one of the things that you've alluded to. Uh, it's a business and there's a lot of things that go into it. So I started asking him a lot of questions about, you know, what's your strategy? How do you intend to compete with the Chinese food? A lot of Chinese foods are everywhere and they do work. Five minutes, they've cooked your, your you know, uh, fried rice for you. Ten minutes, they've, and we know Nigerian food, it takes a lot, you know. And then there's Indian food as well. You know, I said, what's your strategy? How do you intend to gain market share? How do you intend to stand out from the crowd? It's not just good enough that you're doing Nigerian food and you say, oh, it's new. They can't taste this anyway. How do you intend to gain the market share? Then I started asking him about information. How do you value your company? Because now there are a lot of Nigerians saying they want to invest. They want to do franchise. How was the valuation for your company? Because I watch a lot of Shark Tank, a lot of Dragon's Den, a lot of you know, so I'm asking him all these technical questions. He, he was surprised. I wasn't asking him about the jollof rice and the food. And I said, no, no, no. The restaurant is so much more than that. So I think you elaborating many of those things or, or, or you know, shining light on some of those things is very important because I think a lot of people don't look at that technical part of business and especially starting a, a, a restaurant. But to move it along so that other people can ask their question, because I really just want to support and also, I'm going to send this video to the guy because I'm sure he's sleeping now, he's a student. I'm going to get him to watch it in detail and hopefully try to contact you. But um, just to, to, to move it along, do, so you, you have some investors. Um, how did you sort of find a way to stand out? Because I know in the US, there are a lot of Nigerian restaurants. How do you find a way to to cover out your own unique selling point that can give you a share of the market? How do you how did you you know uh, um, structure your restaurant so that it can benefit from that? And then you know how did you also value your business so that you can get a valuation for people who wanted to invest? Maybe it's thirty percent they wanted to invest or how much um, and things like that. You know because you just started a restaurant like that and you haven't really been in business for 10 years 20 years so how did you value it um to 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 be like that um i think i'll just leave it at, at those two questions all right thank you for joining david i think um two questions you asked now how to value the business and then how to what was the first one again uh, how do, what, what 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 would you call your usp how do you what's oh, your um, unique selling part that makes you stand up whatever okay all right so i think that if you're if you have an idea, whether it's in food or it's not in food, right, you want to define what's unique to that business. Um, so for us, we're selling Nigerian food, but we're selling it in a fast casual model. A fast casual model, um, fast casual restaurants are restaurants where you get, um, you know, actual meals. It's not fast food like McDonald's, that it's real food made with real ingredients. Not that McDonald's isn't real food, excuse me. Uh, but, it, you know, it's actually good for you food made with real ingredients and presented to you in a casual, fast method. That's what do do is. So whatever your own unique selling proposition is, like you said, figure out what that is, even if it looks like it's a crowded market. Uh, I don't think African food is at the point anywhere or in Nigerian food in the U.S. or in New York where it's a crowded market. That's not the state for us yet. But even if it's a crowded market, there is always room for something that is excellent. There's always room for something that is distinct. If you commit to your craft and you put a system in place, there's no reason why there won't be room for you. If I may use a non-food example, look at the electric cars that are being made today. They took That's my industry, actually. from regular cars. The Tesla doesn't have square wheels. 
The wheel is not broken, so they've left it round. It needs a battery. It still has a battery. But what it doesn't have is it doesn't use gas. So there's always opportunity for improvement. Back in college, when we had those Nokia phones in Niger, we thought we were lit. Then Steve Jobs came with the iPhone. So there's always room for improvement. Am I correct? So it depends. Now, um, as to Dundu just started, Dundu did not just start. <laughs> Dundu did not just start and we got a valuation or whatever. No, I began this journey over 10 years ago. This is not an overnight thing. When Dundu started, we started with food tastings. We were going to commercial kitchens. We would cook, like I said, we would put our things in a Cambro, put it in Uber, and be hustling all over NYC. So this did not happen all overnight. You have to put your product out there as the minimum viable product. Now, give it your best. Make sure that, you know, you do your very best with it. When you look back at it in five years, you're like, hmm, is that where I was? But that's okay. That was your best for that time. Give it your best. Push it out to the market. Let the market give you feedback. We didn't just open in Midtown, um, prime Midtown Manhattan. We started in commercial kitchens. We started in farmer's markets. You would go to this, um, we were at um, Broadway Bites. This market where you would uh, rent the space. This market where you would rent the space for about, uh, you know, $10,000 for seven weeks, eight weeks, and you'll be there. You would cook from there. We would cook overnight in the commercial kitchen, be there in the morning before daybreak to beat, beat Manhattan traffic. And that's how you learn. And you get feedback from the market. You learn to tweak some things. For example, when we started at the market with Dundu, we started off, Dundu started off as a high-end catering company. I was doing food tastings. I was servicing high-income clients in Long Island, in Westchester, and in Manhattan. And then we started doing these bowls, greens and proteins in the farmer's market. When we started, we were offering the Nigerian-type salad. You know our salad now? Indulgent, creamy. But, you know, everything in there to make you happy. And it was great. And I loved it. And we had those who loved it. But even from Nigerian Americans, we kept getting requests. Don't you have a vinaigrette? Don't you have something that is not creamy? So I went back and I applied my culinary education using ingredients that were familiar to me, like atarodo that my stepmom loves and the mango tree that grew up behind our house. Atarodo, by the way, excuse me, is habanero for those who don't know what that is. Um, I'm putting those together to create salad dressings that were equally delicious, had a clear Nigerian flavor profile, if you understand what I'm saying. But it was what the guests wanted, so don't hide it. Give it your best, put in place proper systems, be disciplined about it, put it in the market, let the market tell you what you have to do to improve it. That And then as to finding partners, find people who are interested and see value and potential in what it is you're doing, and then systemize it and define it well. That would be my suggestion. Okay, so yeah, um, um, that's I'm doing this just so people could see what she meant by when she started. Exactly. This was one of our markets. You see that stall? You see how tiny it is? <laughs> she was renting this small space you know just by the roadside this is just by the roadside on the street and she was selling nigerian food by the way there was also a time that you were doing like a goosey and everything oh yeah that's true i did that as well we would cook it in, we would do a goosey and stews and i would label it if you can find that part of the video and we would label it we'll put the information on there so it's it's been a journey it's not like oh doing just started yesterday not at all so this was the abuse that she was doing at the time and the stew so she was doing it all at at the beginning and then she found out what people actually want in terms of not just what nigerians want you know my brother you brought up the question of how do you compete with chinese restaurants how do you compete with so she's targeting not just nigerians she's targeting everybody she wants the whole world to be interested in nigerian food but they may not all be interested in every nigerian food at a goal but whatever it is they're interested there are people no there are even people interested in the agusi don't that it's not it's not like oh there's no market for this no whatever your own niche is you know put it out there there are people who come into the store and say you don't have the goosey i said we will make sure you buy all the jello fries that we have for now so we have room to sell the goosey 
It doesn't mean there's no market for Igusi. You just need to find out what it is you want to do. What do you want to do? What do you think you can, you know, what's your own vision? Everybody's perspective is different. McDonald's exists, but they're still Burger King. Definitely. Don't get me wrong. Egusi has huge markets. In fact, I don't know if you've been on TikTok and you've seen the challenge yeah. and Fufu and all that. But I'm just saying it's always good to start with something and then you build up later instead of trying to start with everything and then nothing yes. is worth Start from where you start are. To, start from where you are. Start from and, where you are. And, and I really encourage you just to add to what Adiola said. Start from where you are. Every giant was born a baby. If not, how did you come out of your mommy's belly? You were born a baby. So start where you are with what you have and put in your best to that and just be disciplined and consistent. So if your friend you is are. watching, please tell him, first of all, he needs to work on that consistency thing. I think everybody on this platform has appreciated the fact that she's giving every customer the same thing. I think that's the best place to start perfecting what you do to the point where you know you do the same thing each time and you have it documented. Also, I think it's great that you want him to compete with not just other African restaurants, but Chinese restaurants. And like you said, their food is always fast when you go to Chinese restaurants. Within 10 minutes, you get your food. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, sometimes when we go to some Nigerian restaurant, we are sitting down after half hour, 40 minutes, the food is still not ready. <laughs> and then it's different from the one that you ate yesterday. I think working on that is a, a major, major. And also the, the atmosphere um i'm gonna be playing uh, a video showing her restaurant while we're taking the next question so that people see this was uh, a number of uh, media companies in new york have featured her restaurant and it makes me proud as an idea to see this so mm -hmm. all right we thank you so much Marbara, for joining us all the way from australia Let's thank you david thanks Thank you very much. Uh, I oh, appreciate yeah. it. And, um, you know, uh, I will just, um, as I said, I'm going to go and prepare for work now. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> thank uh, you. But, but thank you very much. Um, thank yeah. you. Bye. Bye. All right. We have Ola Kule, your, your mic is muted. Okay, I've unmuted you. Hi, please tell us where you're calling from and what your question is. Ola Kule is my name. As you rightly read, I'm calling from Georgia. Um, let me just be a little bit sarcastic before I go into my question. And she's your life. Hey, I am life with you. Ah, <laughs> this is Jackpot. <laughs> I am seeing you. I'm not, I'm not watching you on Plasma TV. I am watching you on a nice 4K 3G. Ah, well, thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much um and see Folusha, thank you so much for being here thank you for the um story you've been telling of your growth and the consistency so uh my interest or my question does not um, fall within the restaurant angle uh it falls within another area of business but it's more pivot towards moving from you're moving from one area of training. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. She, she got I'm cool. Yeah. Yeah, tell me. Yeah, so um coming more from the angle of moving from um one's area of training, study and uh, certification to something of um, passion. So you moving from being a lawyer yeah. to owning your own restaurant and doing that. So a quick background of me, of myself, I work in the tech industry okay. and uh, yes. for so long, I've always had this desire of going into real estate. Mm -hmm. So, I could be driving and I would see maybe a portion of land or um, just see an open space. And I discovered that, say, after six months, one year, what I actually thought of would fit into that space or would be nice to have in that space would end up being what whosoever buys that place or the investor 
that comes in there will put in in that particular location so that gave me some uh uh that gave me the the the, the boost of okay i think i have something that will be good for real estate now this is where my question lies mm -hmm. i've been trying to uh, i'm so sorry please go ahead it's okay <laughs> who wants to be part of this exactly room? please let her be Hi, <laughs> <laughs> She's I've been, so please let them be. <laughs> yeah so i've been um doing a lot of research in the angle of real estate and what i need to do how do i get into real estate when do i start and things of the like um so i want to know when was it at that point in your career that you discovered that okay it is the right time for me to quit this a professional job I'm doing and face this my passion and my desire that's one then the second question is at what point do you come to that um, realization of okay I think um, bringing in investors at this time is uh, uh, is the right time to uh, uh, to, to make a move so I think for every for every individual, um, regardless of what in I'll, I'll speak from my experience. From every for every individual, it's it's different, right? But one of the things that you want to consider um, before you totally switch careers, and um, it's important to be very practical. I'm a very practical person. Is you know, do you, what you want to switch to into full time now? Do you have a proof of concept for it? before you make the huge step, right? Mm -hmm. That's one thing. Another thing about passion, passion is very important. Um, but I think sometimes the phrase follow your passion, um, and I, I say this with utmost respect, if you're not careful, it could lead one into error. Because if you say follow your passion, you may have more than one passion. You may have multiple passions, but your passion will not keep you when things get challenging. So while your passion may be important in discovering well where your interest lies, what you have a natural knack for, what is equally important is this thing I want to do. Is there an opportunity for it? Is there a market opportunity for it? Am I good at this thing? Is this something I'll be willing to commit to when I'm not feeling like it? Because starting a business in many ways is like a relationship or marriage, you know? You, it, loving the person, loving that choice of career, that switch, is a decision. If you make it based on emotions alone or passion alone, when that business is testing you, you need to be deliberate. So you have to go in there. You know, they said, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. <laughs> Hmm? You want to be dead, but seriously, you want to be deliberate about it. You understand what I'm saying? So is there proof of concept? You also want to be realistic about what your responsibilities are. I spoke earlier about if you're a partner with someone or in a marriage, how will the choices and the decision you're making, what financial or even organizational impact will it have on you and the partner? So those are the things I would consider from a passion perspective. As to when to switch, do you have traction? The people you're serving already, are they asking you for more things? But you mentioned real estate. I'm no real estate expert, but from what I've observed from those around me who are involved in it, and the little I know about it, it's something that you may want to start on the side and see how it goes. If you're not able to do land, do you want to invest maybe in a syndicate or do you want to buy a plot of land and let it appreciate or see maybe you just want to buy an apartment, perhaps in a place in Georgia that is not so close to the city, a small town college community where you know you can rent and you can put a property manager there and you still have enough to pay the mortgage of that investment property. You see what I mean? So those are all the things you have to consider starting from where you are. If you have a steady job, you can stay with a steady job. Whatever savings you've put aside for it, you don't have to buy it in the huge metropolitan city that you are. If, let's say, you're in New York, go to Albany. 
go to the Troy area, these places that are have college towns and there are people there that you know rent apartments where you can put in place a property manager and from the rent you can pay the mortgage of the investment property and still have a little to set aside that can be cash flow and that you can use to build wealth into another real investment properties. So those would be the um uh, those will be the considerations, I think, and understand what the KPIs of real estate are, you know, cash flow, property taxes, all of those implications that you have to deal with and be very clear eyed about it and be deliberate. Also, if you're a person of faith, ask God to order your steps. God is there to help you, but more importantly, be practical. He's not going to change the post. There are people in business who don't, who don't, are not people of faith. So be practical, be realistic. And just go for it. Don't hold back. Just give it your best shot. I really like this advice. And, you know, a number of people agree with you in the comment section, like David Adekoya saying, test your feet in the water first before diving in. Mm -hmm. I think real estate, those, um, real estate is one of those things that you can actually combine with, you know, a full-time job. A lot of people are into real estate, even though it's not their full-time job. Now, me, I'm not saying don't make it full-time job because I know people that are doing a full-time job are so successful. But like she said, um, if you can, like, try out, you know how she said she started out as CC Poots, cooking on Friday nights and selling it over the weekend and all that. She didn't just get into Dundu in one day uh, until she felt comfortable enough that, you know what, this thing is going to be successful before she actually quit her job and also uh before going into it uh full time so i think if you can also do that you can buy a property you can try to and, and you can also try to get a license a real estate license i think that we have like uh things that you have to study and all that you, you can work on that in the meantime you know to get to know the amount of things and you can start out with a property and see how well it does and all that before you maybe by this time next year we'll have you on the show as well thriving yeah i mean fingers crossed because um like the last um pastor emmanuel oh, i'm trying to remember uh, the, the, yes that you invited i was gonna um uh, attend the real estate training uh that he said it was it was organizing alongside with uh, madame grace Okure and all that but it has to be in person in nigeria actually i've been making different moves i've been um i started uh, i was deliberate just as you said see actions need to be deliberate so i made sure that the feeds i was seeing on instagram on youtube was related to what i want so I was seeing different people post different stuff. So I made sure that my um, things I see daily on the social media is in line with what I'm thinking and what I want to do. So with that, I was then able to pick out, uh, um, um, you talked about mentor, and you talked about role model. So I was able to pick a mentor, actually, you know, mentors, you have to still pay and all those stuff. So I was able to pick, um, yeah, I was able to pick a mentor that will be, uh, I'm going to go through his training uh, uh, model for to to get into this real estate. I'm not trying to become an agent per se, that uh, like a seller agent, buyer agent, I'm really trying to own own something. Where I, is what you're interested in. Right, right, right. So I have made some of the initial moves that I think will put me in the right position. I'm just thinking in my head that, okay, when could be that right time for you Don't to be like right. you won't be in doubt you will know <laughs> because the business you will be getting the business will be growing there will be a greater demand on your time it will start generating um revenues it will start generating revenues that will be able to so you know support you in a bit of a way to to meet your own needs so the key right. indicators will be there by that mm -hmm. time, when the time is right, you understand what your overhead is. You understand what your maintenance costs, costs are. You understand that sometimes the, the spaces will be vacant and then your cash flow may not be the same. You understand that when the place is full, so all of those things will come over time. 
with mm. every mm. individual and with every situation it might vary. Beautiful, you know, beautiful. Good luck with everything. Beautiful, yeah, beautiful. Good luck. We hope that you do it, make us proud, and then come back and follow you. your story. Sure. Just Thank like you so much. Cynthia Just says that Cynthia says joining this assures her that she's doing well and she's on track. She's starting what she calls Olivic's Kitchen, mm. and she believes that someday she will be hosted by Adele Lafayette. Why not? Well, well, there's a, there's a quick That's joke it. in regards to cooking and kitchen and all that. When I was in college in Nigeria, because I ended up loving to cook, I did not start by, oh, I, I really want to cook. I started cooking as a result of not having money to go to restaurant anymore. So I came to school one semester with lots of raw food stuff. I had no idea how to cook. And myself and my friend, it might even be here, I never can tell, Edward. And we just started figuring it out. And lo and behold, we stopped going to the regular restaurant and we were cooking and we will feed a lot of people on our floor. And after a while, some of my friends, you know, when we're getting close to graduating and some of my friends will make jokes like say, ah, only, you know, if you know see job, we just go to cook, just go for restaurant. <laughs> 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 you know, but yeah, that's just part of it. I also, I, I love to cook. I enjoy cooking after that experience of not always having money to go to a restaurant anymore. But yeah, I enjoy cooking. And again, Auntie Jola, thank you. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, it's welcome. a pleasure to be here on this world stage. Yeah, you're thank, one you. And only <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And our next, yeah. guest, our next guest today is not a visitor. She's not a guest anymore. She's a regular <laughs> on this show. Her name is Nadi. Uh -huh. Nadi is my friend now. Uh, I'm yet to meet her, but hey, she joins every time she could. Hi, Nadi. How have you been? Hi. Hi. And uh, tell us where you're joining from and what your question is. Um, my name is Nadi. I'm joining from Norway. Hi, Adola. I just want to say I'm so happy to still actually see you and talk to you again. <laughs> I'm so sorry, my baby is crying. Me I'm too. sorry. I'm so happy to see you too. Thank you so much. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Thank you. Yes, and then, um, hi, Auntie. For hi, all. Nadine. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? I'm very well. Thank you for asking. Thank you. Thank you so much. And then, um, my question is that, and then, uh, and, um, uh, Oh my God! Okay, now I'll forget about it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Just for time. Okay, okay. My like, like my like my question is that, like in uh, in um in uh, like 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 how, how many people support you in your business? Like to like like support you, like give you advice to keep going on. If like if like even like even though you are having challenges. <laughs> Um, what so can you be a bit more specific when you say support? Yeah, like 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 I said that like I said that how many people that like like I said that how many people that support you? How many people support you in your business? How many people support you to keep going? Oh, okay. Like you mean a, a staff strength? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, so it varies. It varies per time, the number of people in the restaurant. So we're a team of less than 10 people at this time, but we're not necessarily all there at the same time. So okay. we staff based, um, we have shifts. We staff based on what the business needs are at that particular time. During lunch when it's very busy, um, okay. at peak hours, the staffing strength is different from when it's a uh, late lunch, which is between the lunch and the dinner rush. So we staff accordingly is what we do per time but you know everybody has different roles and different responsibilities and one of the things we have also found very helpful is quite a number of the people on my team are cross-trained and by cross-trained i mean we have some very not, um, great cooks who are also able to work in the front of the house and be servers so that helps us to be able to run cross-training people I think it's great. So times when um, it's not your busiest time of the day, having, you know, two, three people in the restaurant who can cross move and act in, you know, be effective in role A and in role B is very effective. So that also helps because you also, as a small business owner, you want to 
stay on top of your labor costs. It's true. It's true. Yeah. But thank you so much. Thank you yeah, so much. Yeah. I'm very impressed of you, Red. I'm just listening, listening. Thank you so much. God bless yeah, you. Yeah, Adola, yeah. thank you so much. Adola, I love you so much. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right. Bye, so we're going to go to the next person. That is Kizes. Sorry. That is Kizes Lester. Um, before he says his question, I just want to read a few comments. Um, somebody named Tracy, I don't know, maybe you know this person, Tracy Boogie says, well done, Felicia, proud of you, shout out from London. Oh, that's my elder sister. Oh, okay. She knows I'm a nerd. Sister is, sister is watching. She must be really proud of you. I love you, I love you, I love you. <laughs> and real quick, Catherine Ilona is wondering, uh, she's in a bad one, but she's wondering if two of her friends, I mean, sorry, her friend and her daughter in the U.S., if they can visit you at your restaurant because they are considering a venture similar to yours. Are you available for consultation, you know, and how much is your price, those things? Do they have to go through me before they, you know, I'm just anyone can visit. Anyone can visit Dundu. Dundu is open to the public. So everyone and anyone, anytime is welcome all the time. So please visit, um, feel free to visit. And if I'm there, please say he hello. And um, if I have any answers um, to the questions asked, I'll be happy to share. But Dundu is always open. Once we're open, anyone can come in. <laughs> awesome. How late are you open? I know you start at 11. So we open, currently we're open on weekdays. We're in the, you know, heart of the office district in Midtown Manhattan. So we open at 11 and we close at 7 p.m. 11 to 7 p.m. Yes. says thank you for this wealth of wisdom. Um, oh, thank you, Bumi. Yeah, Mrs. says God bless you for this show. And once again, Olubumi says your voice is soothing, and that you will also be a great voiceover artist. So it's not okay, Disney. Me. Next, next animation. Call me. <laughs> the talent is thank not you, just Bumi. in the restaurant. But let's take his as Lester's question. Hi, my brother. Tell us where you're calling from. Thanks for joining us again. I, I remember you from the last time. And tell us what you're doing. Hi, my sister Diola. Uh, Thank you very much for the opportunity. And madam, I want to a uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. To us this evening. I don't know if it's uh, if it is afternoon uh, by your side. Where whatever it whatever whatever the time is, I uh, wish you I, I hope you are doing well. I'm is everything good. okay? Okay. Thank you for the opportunity. I would like to ask for we that maybe we are not into much in business, like person that is starting up, like before you go into business, what you should consider first, one. Second, like what is what are the challenges you should be expect, you should be expecting before when you are in business, and thirdly, what, how can you scale your business? And what is your plan in scaling your business? Because I want, I want, I have a dream for you. I know that it will come to pass. Like I will come to you, like in in Italy here. I will just go into do do, and I know that I will have the best meal of my life. And I will be feeling that I'm in Nigeria back. I will be back home. Like oh, I eat my meal. <laughs> so that's my that's my. So you, you have questions. like three questions and she already yeah. answered like the first yeah. two. Maybe you may need to watch, but the last mm, one. No, I want I want her first. to go generally to be like I I miss uh, the part of uh, the program. Sorry, <laughs> I just wanted to go generally about the question, not to be specific about uh, food and beverage. Like somebody that wants to go into tech, real estate, and all that. Sorry, if I make it to repeat yourself. No, no, it's okay. I'm happy to share what I know. So um, I think you had three questions like Adiola pointed out. The first one, which we'd cover, the first two we'd covered. So the first one was how do you, uh, you know, if you have, how you said, how do you start in business? I think the first thing, yeah. is, is that correct? Good. So what the, are, uh, before starting a business, what things you should consider before starting a business? Okay, all right. So before starting a business, right, you want to figure out, what exactly is it that you're, you want to put out there, right? You need to have an idea. You need to have something you're passionate about, a product or a service that you're looking to, you're looking to meet a need, basically. 
because a business basically is people exchanging their financial value for a product or service that you are you are offering. Am I correct? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So you have to figure out. I would think that would be the very first step. Figure out what that product or service is. Understand how you intend to make money from that product or service. Now, what is the, we had talked about the USP before, what makes that business unique, which is the unique selling proposition? What's different about it? Why would people give their money to you and not to the other person who offers a similar service to what you are providing? Or perhaps your service or your product has never been seen before. Like when the, what's it called? That thing that had music, not the iPhone. Why does it elude me? Yeah. I, iPod, iPod yeah. or iPad. You, yeah, the iPod, exactly. When the iPod came out and we were all super impressed by it. So figuring out what that is, I think, would be the very first step for you. And then secondly, you said how what kind of challenges would you face? I think that's a very general question. It will depend on what industry you're in, um, what industry you're in, and um, how you are approaching building the business. But certainly you will have to, some of the challenges that I think are common to every ent entrepreneur is you have to figure out how to market your product. You have to figure out how to um, produce your product correctly, consistently. You have to figure out how to hire people. You have to figure out how to train those people, how to ensure that you not just train them, but after training them, they do what they've been trained to do. So there are quite a series of things uh, that you can expect as challenges. But if you're committed to it, you're disciplined and you get knowledge, you get knowledge, uh, get knowledge, um, you know, commit to improving your skill level, commit to excellence in your craft and trying to become the very best at what you will do. I think that's very important. And taking it one step at a time, whatever challenge you face, You'll be able to overcome it that way and just being persistent. Don't give up. You may have to tweak it. You may have to improve it. You may have to, you know, reshape it and remold it. And that's okay. But be focused, be disciplined, be consistent, and don't give up. And be teachable. Be teachable. I think that's one of the things that has worked for me the most in life. I am a teachable person. I am very teachable. So be teachable. I think that's an asset. All right. Okay. Thank that you is so you. Much. You we need. You need to be adults every time. You need to be learning more and exactly. to be consistent. Okay. Uh, what about the the last part of the question? Uh, that is the third. Uh, the third question. How to scale so how to your scale business? Your business. Yes. Let's and uh, uh, business. Uh, what are your plans to scale the business around the globe? Because so we don't. We are not talking about. How to scale Dundu? Yeah, because oh, I, want, I want I want I want something that sorry sorry if I if I cut you short I want something like if I come to Dundu I want to pee home I want to go back to Nigeria when even though I'm not in Nigeria when I eat I know that I'm eating my food I want to feel like how this is home because when you are using iPhone you you feel special as we we are talking. We, we are talking about iPod. If you use iPhone, you know you are special. You are not using the rest like other phones. Mm -hmm. Like when I want to go to Dundu, I want to see something specific. I want to feel home. I want to go back to my, to my, to my, uh, I don't know how to say it. I want to go back to my mother's land in the, from the food I eat. I want to feel like, oh yes, I'm, I'm home. I'm eating I'm my grandmother's food. I'm sure when you visit Dundu in New York, and ultimately Dundu will go beyond New York, the goal of this restaurant and my goal is to definitely scale beyond where we're at right now. And I'm sure when you visit us in New York, our food will give you that experience. So make sure you come by very soon. Okay. okay. Thank you very so, much. All right. Thank you so what much. What about the scale there. part? How to scale the business? How to scale your business or any business in general? So, generally i think the things we mentioned earlier having in place systems proper systems hiring the right people being clear on what is unique about your business and why others why people why people will purchase from you instead of other people i think those are some of the key ingredients amongst many others 
that it's important you figure out to allow you scale the business, put in place systems, be deliberate, be consistent, and hire the right oh. people, then train them. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much my brother. Thank Thank you. You just so much please, just me. one more, one, one last question, yeah. and I will keep my mouth shut. One last question, I keep my mouth shut. Look at uh, this comment. Try to move <laughs> along quickly. Uh, because there are so many people that are trying to ask questions, and we've been okay. Adding okay, all I will just, hours. just just last one because I love, I just love the response I'm getting from my sister. And uh, is uh, um, uh, competition good for a startup, like a starting business? Is competition good for a startup? Every business will have competition, so there's I I I don't. Is competition good? Yes. Yeah, for a, for a starting up business like a startup, it depends on your perspective. I think there'll always be competition, but I think instead of focusing on competition, you should focus on what you are doing. Focus on what you are doing. That should be your focus. The competition isn't going to pay you. Your guests will. Your customers will. So focus on giving them the best. The competition will always be there, even when they're not there. When you start, they will be there at some point. But focus on your. Focus on your guests. That would be my point. Focus I should focus on, on my class. Okay. Focus Thank you very own. much. Thank you. Not on the competition. Yeah. Thank you, Adriana. I really appreciate it. I learned a lot tonight. You don't need to worry about it. There will always be competition. Exactly. If you focus on your focus, you'll be fine. Real quick. <laughs> Real quick, thank well, you, you very know, much. Also, you know, you posted on Instagram that uh, there are two types of rice. There's jollof rice and then there's and the rest. Just so you know, there is this Ghanaian brother, Kofi, who is always trying to pull my legs when I'm doing my show like that. You know, he's here asking if I'm feeding my daughter Ghanaian jollof rice. You see, brother, why are you doing this now? When we are talking about like like jollof rice, I just said jollof rice. So I included, I included all my Ghanaian brothers and sisters. You all are included, okay? But Niger jollof, Ghana jollof. Anyways, <laughs> I just want you to know real quick that you have some shout outs from a number of people who know you, who admire you. Olu Adekamb is one of them. Hello, Auntie Felicia. It's Mimi from London. I cannot wait to try your food. Thank you, you Mimi. Like this person knows you. There's also Praise Bangboye. Shout out, Auntie Felicia. Thank I you. Think they know you. Olu Atoyoba. Shout out from Niger. Felicia, so, so proud of my darling cousin. <laughs> Hi, so hi, hi, thank you. I'm I from do. a very large family, very global too. <laughs> That's wonderful. And uh, Omotade really likes what you said, that passion likes the sustaining strength in trying times. So they really like that you talked about. And passion can change. Passion yeah. can change. So passion is great, but you need discipline, consistency, and there, there has to be opportunity there. So not just follow your passion alone is not enough. Well, you have to pay your rent and your bills. You have to send your kids to college. So open up your true word right there. So the last few people that we have, Destiny, Allison, Desam, and Bani Anagbao. Those are the last people I'm taking because it's almost two hours. My guest is getting tired. I'm so sorry. Um, mm -hmm. But right now we have Destiny. Please tell us where you're calling from and what your question is. Yeah, good morning. My name is Destiny and I'm calling from from Australia. Hello, Destiny. How are you? Hi. Very well, thank you. Um, this is a very good um platform. I really appreciate your time. Um, it's actually my first time getting into the pla um into the program. And you know, I had just woken up and a friend sent me the link and he's like, since you're interested in this business, in this area of business, you need to join this link. And the interesting thing is um, back in Nigeria, I had um, I had the franchise of Dudu Nation. You know, I was one of the franchise um, owners of Dudu Nation in Wuse to Abuja. So when I saw it, I was like, whoa, what an interesting coincidence. Um, well, um, real quick, my question is on, you know, setting up something like this in a country outside the nigerian country you know and that's currently where i'm at you know trying to set up something very original something very nigerian 
Um, but one of the fears we get to have is, you know, um, possibility of being accepted even by the, you know, the Western guys, you know, because um, at first the plan was just make it more like a fusion, you know, have other other cuisines and stuff. And then secondly, we are thinking of making it strictly original, strictly local, you know, present the Niger stuff there and don't worry about the non-Nigerians. You know, how do you deal with those, um, how do you deal with those um, challenges or with those fears? And um, what would be your advice? You know, is it to go strictly local or to try and make it a bit westernized? Well, it's nice to meet you, Destiny. I think um, I can give you specific advice on whether you should do a fusion or go strictly authentic or do, you know, or westernize totally. I think what I might be able to give you some counsel on is what is in your heart to do? What do you believe in? What do you think has the opportunity? Where do you think the opportunity lies for the concept that you have? That's what I will focus on, right? There are different concepts. Fusions, many restaurant fusion concepts have done very well. Straight line authentic concepts to have done well. It depends on what you want to do and where the opportunities lie. Um, I don't think Ikoi in London, I haven't been. I follow them online and I'm a huge fan of what they're doing. I'm not sure if it should even be described as fusion, but they, they are inspired by West African cuisine and what they're doing is so impressive. What they're doing is so impressive. A straight up authentic Nigerian restaurant with everything too. There are many great ones that are impressive. So I think figuring out what it is, what is it I want to do? What is unique about this thing I want to put in the market? And then where I want to put it, is there opportunity there? Those are the things I would focus on. And as to having fears, oh, it's a good thing. If you don't have any fears, it means your dreams are too small or what you want to do is inconsequential. So go in there a little afraid. Everybody's always a little afraid. They're just doing it anyway. So go ahead and do it. Cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think that's all. Okay. That's... All right. Well, it's good luck with everything. I'm rooting for you. you got this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Anytime. Yeah. Miss Adiola. Where is she? Atiola, did we lose you? Okay, I can't let anyone in the room here. So we're just going to have to hold on and wait for Adiola. Let me see if I can reach her. What happened to Adiola? Oh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, the next guest we have is Desam. Um, please tell us where you're calling from and what your question is. Okay. Um, God bless you, Adiola, uh, Miss Adiola. Um, my sister, I want to thank you for um, giving us knowledge in so many things that we need to learn and to hear too. Um, I, just, I want to thank Adiola more. Yeah, I, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm calling from Portacot. Um, I have my own brand. Last year, I did a video with Adiola and Josh. Um, Josh, which has to do with something about sending money, send wave. Yeah, I can actually remember. I remember from you. Send wave. <laughs> Hi. Um, We're no longer hearing you. I can't hear you anymore, Desan. Adiola, can you hear him? I we can't hear you at all. Hello? And your camera is frozen as well. Hello? Hmm. Maybe he can type his question in the comments. Yeah, maybe you can type your question in the comments. Uh, I think he's the last one in the studio, actually. The other people, they dropped off. <laughs> The Sam. Hello? Okay, I'm going to read some comments while his camera boots. Faith Agbelusi really likes what you mentioned about one being teachable. 
Yeah. <laughs> and Suni, Joe, really likes all your answers to the questions. You've really mastered the tool of excellence in business management. Thank you, Suni. I haven't mastered it yet, but I'm still learning. But thank you for the compliment. I appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, Desan, if you can hear us, maybe log out and log back in. Try that. Desan, I don't know if you can hear us, but maybe if you sign out and log back in. And by all this, is doing business in Nigeria is challenging, but he's encouraged and he's forging ahead irrespective of all the hurdles. I'm rooting for you, by all Go for it. You can do it. This is a comment by Bola Edu, who says that you're absolutely right, that sometimes you don't have the support of a partner or family member. But letting God lead and building your own support system is key. Yeah. It's your life. You're the architect of your own life. Make your own choices. Go for it. And, you know, God is faithful. He won't let you down. And be disciplined and determined. And hopefully the person comes around. And if they, not, they don't, just go on your own journey. You have one life to live. Keep it all. And Paul says success isn't always about greatness. It's all about consistency. I think that's the biggest lesson for me as well from this show. The fact that you make sure that everybody gets the same thing. That's like taking excellence to another level. Mm -hmm. It's like making this automated so that it's the same results. Yes, yes. Love it. All right, this um, let's try one more time. Okay, my brother. Yeah, go to your question quickly so that if anything happens again, mm. okay. can you type your question? Yeah, I think that might be helpful. We'll take it. You can type it. If this doesn't we'll work. Back. Type it. Nicole really appreciates this noble venture to educate and promote upcoming entrepreneurs. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Nicole. This is one of your customers. Ah, thank you. thank you. Thank you for keeping us open. Oladili <laughs> Oyeni <laughs> has visited you twice. Uh, thank That's you. We appreciate you, Oladili. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, Catherine was asking how to join live. I posted the link, but now we're rounding up. So sorry. Um, Olubenga Bamiboye is celebrating you and proud of you. I think this is one of your cousins as well. <laughs> you Thank you. Thank you. The show. Okay. <laughs> Disam, please type your question. Like I really want to ask your question, but um, it's not, the video is not working. So Please and please type your question, Desam. Uh, well, while we wait, I think the one question I think we may not have covered a bit was the question about um, getting partners and investors. Um, is it okay to share a bit about that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so quickly, I think um, in getting partners or investors, Dundee is very much a small business. We won't always be. Um, our goal is to grow. But I think finding people who understand what it is you're doing and see value um, in in um, understand what you're doing, how to you know they don't have to be in your industry, but see value in what it is you're trying to achieve is important. You should also be looking for investors who are accredited investors. For example, in the U.S., um, there's a minimum amount of revenue that a person must earn for them to be able to go into a startup venture, a small business, and invest in it. So, and on people who understand that a business takes time to to grow. If you're also looking for partners, I think before you think of investing, make sure your systems are in place, you understand how your business makes money and how those who come into your business, how they will make money and get profit from it as well. It does, doesn't matter whether they are friends, they are family members or they are investors from outside. I think um, by outside, I mean um, not people within your, um, your personal circle. I think it's important. Once you have systems in place, then, you know, Put together an investment deck, you know, put together what's your concept, what makes your concept special, put together, put together the financial statements and, you know, talk to people about it. And when you do have those investors, be transparent, deal with them in integrity and keep them informed. 
Don't wait for them to come to you to come and ask questions. Consistently update them on what's going on in the business. Even when it's challenging, if they're real partners, share with them what's going on. I think that's um, very important. And put in place a proper legal structure if you're looking to get partners. Don't put anything on a napkin. Get an attorney. Get an attorney. Um, I am an attorney and I did not try to set up the, the legal structure of Dundu when we took up on partners. Find people who have done similar and ask them to recommend attorneys so they can set up proper systems in place. That will benefit you. It will benefit your partners. It will take care of places where intellectual property might be uh, matter to you and all of those fine details. So, you know, be consistent and detailed in that way. And, you know, make your pitch to them. the proper way, get an attorney. Don't speak to your tax accountants before you set up the structure. If you're particularly if you're in the first world somewhere, you don't want to set up a structure and then you dis discover afterwards that you've set up a structure that have put you and the partners at a disadvantage. Speak to an attorney. Um, don't represent yourself. It's not very. I wouldn't do it. Okay. So we're going to round up. I've, I've been trying to wait for the same to start this question. I couldn't find it. So we're going to round up. Mm -hmm. Ladele Oyeni promised to visit again for the third time. He must have liked the most times that he's visited. Adeyemi Adewale is saying, do you have an app? This is your next assignment. Do you app? We you have know? an app. Oh, you can order on our website. The website takes you. All our lunch can be ordered on our, on our website. And we deliver. And we also do catering. We do corporate catering. We do, um, you know, drop-off catering. And we deliver as far as Connecticut to the tri-state area. So, um, but for lunch, of course, within Manhattan. So check it out. So you should also work on the app sometimes. So later, I yeah. you know, yeah. we secured the name Dundu, yeah. Dundu app. So before anybody else steals it. Mm -hmm. um, just so you know, David Olufemi wants you to know that he's rooting for you today. But... Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to run up on this comment. I mean, Akindo says it is called Dundun, not Dundu. Hey, voila, voila. I'm not sure about that, Akin. <laughs> oh, I Amin, mean, I'm not sure about that. I think it is Dundu. Dundu. We are Dundu. Well, um, there's no end at the, at the end of it where we are from. <laughs> Well, thank so, you, Ari. Thank you. I believe it is Dundu, do, do, not Dundu. Do, do. mm -hmm. But thank you so much to everybody that joined us today. Yeah, thank you. This has been um, quite an eye opening and you know very educative. This is one of the questions we didn't get to. When do you start expecting returns from your business? Is there a waiting period? Um, I'm pretty sure you you know you worked for some time before you start. Do you want to say anything about that? Yeah, um, it will vary per business and what your model is. That's why you have to be clear on what your uh, returns. So returns could mean the same thing. Like, are you making, do you have a margin or profitability yet? You mean, are you profitable or, or uh, I think if you, let me try and help you. If you, if you understand what your numbers are before you're open or you start whatever business it is you're starting, there will be some um, unexpected um, expenses, of course, but if you're clear on what your margins will be, you have to, for you to say you're getting a return, it could mean different things for different people. Do you mean the entire capital you've gotten from the business, you've made it back, or you are, you know, you have a, a net margin, like a profit margin at the end of every pay period for you? I think that may vary. So it depends. I'm not sure how to answer that. It's not very general. For the last question, DJ Olayemi says Dundu is a talking drum. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, maybe I'm pronouncing it right, but I, I think I have heard of that before. Mm -hmm. And Victor Adibayo is asking what service he can offer to the Dundu brand. Is open to partnership. How can anybody contact you beyond? I mean, the Dundu uh, Instagram page is at Dundu restaurant, right? At it Dundu, E A T D U N D U. Um, what service can we offer? Um, I don't know what service you offer. So, um, if there's something you think, um, a service you think we might need as a business, reach out. And um, if we do, we'll let you know. If we don't, we'll let you know promptly too. I won't dilly dally or 
or um, waste your time. But I appreciate the question. So people can DM you on Instagram if they're trying to reach you beyond today, or how can people contact you? Um, yeah, you can send a DM on Instagram. We'll try our best to get, um, that should work. And then um, I would think that would be the best way. And if there's a specific, you know, need or something you would like my thoughts on that is entrepreneurial or food business related and um, you can also contact me through through adiola i'll be happy to share Absolutely. whatever insight I have. Adiola. <laughs> i'm ending with this comment um our Ghanaian brother lives in pennsylvania he wants to drive all the way to new york just to taste Coffee. thank you we can't wait we'll be waiting for you we are ready for the challenge Ready. Thank you. Okay. I've been to Ghana to eat the Ghanaian jollof rice. <laughs> I still tell you, Nigerian jollof rice is the best. Yes, Nigerian jollof. Oh. <laughs> oh, Ghanaian yeah. jollof is nice, but Nigerian jollof. Oh. <laughs> I mean, they're trying, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll it's give it right. to them. We'll give it to right. them. But Nigerian jollof. <laughs> they cheat with Shito. But guys, next Sunday, I will be joined uh, by Suji Moto. So, I'm really excited about that as well. He's into real estate big time, modern, luxurious buildings in Lagos. And he's going to talk about everything, you know, once again, uh, some of the challenges, how to build wealth and so on. Today has been wonderful with Folusha Salami all the way from Dundu restaurants in New York. And once again, their address is 140 East 44th Street. New York, New York, 10017. If you know Nigerian embassy, it's it's not far from the Nigerian embassy. Just Google Dundu. You will find them there. They open at 11 a.m. Monday to Friday until 7 p.m. Thank you so much, my sister, for making no, Thank time. you for having me. It's I really fun. appreciate this. And it was fun. It was, <laughs> thank you, everyone. And if you're here, you have a dream, go for it. You already have what's in you to be. It's already in you to be everything you want to be. Be disciplined, be consistent, focus on your focus, and trust God. <laughs> focus on your focus. We're going to end with this uh, broadcast uh, or about Dundu Restaurant, and I'm pretty sure that people would love the fact that you're representing us, and then I will end the show as soon as it ends. Thank you so much, sis. Thank you so much, Adiola. I appreciate you. All right. Oh, what is this? <laughs> Back. Ben, where are you? Tell us all about yes. it. Dundu is where we are. Brand new spot just opened up a couple weeks ago right here on 41st between Lex and 3rd. Uh, this is your spot. This is your lunch spot. Nigerian food. Authentic Nigerian food. Fulusha, how are you, my love? Good. You're doing so well with the name now. Thank you. I, had, I was at a B- minus when I walked in the door. and I'm, I'm at a solid maybe yes, A- minus at this point. Yes, you're walking your way to an A- minus now. She's then. filling the line. That's what we call it in the biz. She's filling That's the line. Akara. Can you narrate what we're looking at right now? Because everything looks, everything is so fresh. I'm watching her cook this up. It's so fresh and so delicious, so much flavor, and so unique and different if you've not had this before. Take us through, show us. Okay, so this is jollof rice. This is something that everybody says they, 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 their favorite food on planet Earth is yes, this. Yes, jollof rice is amazing. It's a rice pilaf made with chicken stock, mm. pureed bell mm. peppers, yes. and tomatoes. Hot. And of course, we make our own chicken stock from scratch. Oh. Okay, oh. and um, of course, it has some herbs and spices in nice, it. Nice, nice. So um, it's Nigerian jollof, which is the best jollof. Um, this is a herb brown rice. Cool. Um, it's brown rice. We have parsley in it. And um, take us through a little faster because we're not gonna be able to cook anything. Oh, okay. So this sister. is honey beans. <laughs> this is honey beans. It's a uh, beans. It's naturally mildly sweet. We just add onion and salt. Love it. Pepper grilled chicken. Pepper grilled. Okay, keep going. What's this? Akara, <laughs> which is a fluffy bean fritter. Oh, I and love this, that. Yes, and this is our goat stew. Oh, goat stew. That's goat cool. Stew. It's okay, perfect. Okay. Authentic. Nigerian yes, we have. Love this. And these are our sides. We have sweet plantains. <laughs> this is moi moi. It has boiled eggs and tilapia in it. Moi moi is a steamed bean cake. That's what we made in the eight o'clock hour. Yes, right? that's the one we Healthy, made. Healthy, delicious, flavorful. Is it moin moin or moi moi? Because there's it's, an N, I'm looking. It's moin moin. Moin moin. But it, the N kind of just fades away. It's not moo moo, because yeah. that's something completely different. No, moo moo is Don't like dum dum. Dum dum, <laughs> yeah. This is a furry It has smoked turkey and um, tripe in it. Okay. And we have chard carrots. That's a oh. seasonal vegetable. Oh my God. And these are our dressings. These are um, homemade dressings? You make all these? Everything from scratch. This it. is a sweet onion dressing. Okay. Goes well with the party bowl, which I'll pick up one for you shortly. There's a party bowl? Yes, yeah, smoky jalapeno. 
This is atadili sauce and mango habanero. Heck yeah. Let's throw things on things on the grill. Oh wait, do we have more over here? Yeah, we want to pick up a bowl and then go to the grill. Would you like that? Yeah, but you want to make a bowl? Yeah, let's wait, make a yeah. bowl. And then, so the, how you doing? You want to throw some things on the grill? Is that cool? Yes. You got some chicken going? Is it this chicken, the same chicken? Yes. Heck yeah, man. We'll show I love you this. how to make the chicken. Okay, and so this, this is an example. You come in and you get the fresh veggies all here, all the produce. Yes. We showed you the giant carrots before. But look at this. This is very important because I go to a lot of salad places and I'm like, yeah, it looks kind of funkadelic. So this is a good breeze. It's okay, a special beautiful. brand. You have kale, cabbage, carrots, and radicchio in okay. it. It's amazing. So you can pick your green. You pick your green. Okay. You pick your greens, I beg your pardon, and then you add your grain, right? Okay, I got gotcha. you. So once you have your grain, you pick one of our three God, proteins. I love this. You go with chicken. You gotta um, come to the burbs. I would eat this every day. <laughs> Oh. So you go with chicken, yes, and then you move to your side. We right. have four sides. You pick two. You get two with your bowl. Nice. So with the party bowl, you get plantains. I love a party bowl. Yes. I'm very excited about this. You get plantains and you get two moi moi. Moi moi. Moi moi. Just Let's use see. your fingers. I'm fine. I trust you. <laughs> no, the Department of Health doesn't well, want that bad. Okay. No, no, no. she's, she's extremely careful about this. I've, I've been watching her. She's excellent. Let's go All back right, there. and okay. then you get the dressing. Oh, this, okay, dress me. Let's go back. Come on, we're running All out right. of time. Let's go. Let's do this. Uh, and that's the party bowl. A lot of fried plantains, right? <laughs> Okay, Come let's go me. to the back. Come with me. You're the best. Thank you for lunch. That of was course. very nice of you. So we have the moin moin. This, this is the moin moin. Like. So once it's ready, what we do is we cover it with aluminum foil. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Are these like parents' recipes? Whose recipes are all these? These are my recipes. Everything nice. made from scratch. Um, okay. The Moi Moi recipe is quick. My stepmom's recipe. Oh, nice. Her name is Christy. She's amazing, is by she the way. Is she in New York? No, my stepmom lives in Nigeria, but she's the very best. We only broadcast in Nigeria. Oh. <laughs> it's New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Nigeria. That's, okay. our, that's our broadcast. Okay, okay I'll tell her. So I'll, tell her. Yeah. I'll tell her and the Moi Moi recipe. Yeah. It goes in there for Look 20 plant. minutes, the and size that's of it. These beautiful and plantains. Yes. Jalil, watch your fingers. I'm very Let's rub some chicken on the grill. So this, what, do we talk about what's on the chicken here? By oh, way, that's our peppered grilled chicken. This is boneless chicken thighs. Yes, thank God for the thighs. We're talking about breast versus thighs. Tony's a big breast guy, loves the breast. We all we only do thighs. Oh, look at that. I'm going to get out of the way so you can just watch this. Look at that. Of course. Look at this. All these. So you're just doing this all day. And then and, and you've been open for like two weeks. How are things? Very well. People are starting to know we're open. And then um, the office crowd, they've been great. We have people coming back two days a week, three days a week. That's we awesome. Just, people just need to know we're here, I think. Well, let's tell them right now. You are currently with us at Dundu right yeah. here on 41st between 3rd and Lexington. We said it before. Midtown folks. You got husbands, wives, girlfriends. Everyone. Whoever's working in this area, whoever lives in this area, if you want something new and fresh and different, this is your spot. Don't worry. He's got it. We got it. Everything's fine, Jalil. You're going to be great. You're going to be great. You're going to be awesome. Uh, the new spot. Come check it out. The food is in the studio right now, so you guys can verify how fabulous it is. Fresh ingredients, healthy, Thank you, and delicious. And it is so good. delicious. that you may not have every day. You it's like it? so good. It's so, it's so it. good. Thumbs up from the anchors right now. I mean, <laughs> it's like 18 got thumbs up. Anchors. Gotta get it. It's got a nice little kick to it. I used yeah. to live over there. If I still lived there, I'd be there every single day. I'm gonna go there after work. Every day. I'd be here all the time. They have oh the kale, kale, so I'm in. I love it. I'm very excited. I want so Momo of the Moo. What is this? Moi Moi. Moi Moi, moi, moi of the Moi Moi. Yeah. Mm. The Moi Moi is good. Folusha, thank more you. More moi, moi, so, moi. Thank yeah. You. Thanks, Folusha. Thanks, Jaleel. They, uh, OG says thank you. She says she oh. loves you. She goes, oh my goodness. <laughs> it's Come check it out. You know, right over there? Ooh, come check no, it out. I'm like this. <laughs> oh my gosh, got a nice little kick. She has the Heimlich. <laughs> it's got some kick. This is Doubtfire. And I'm breaking my fast because I don't eat till 2 p.m. Look at you. And That's for this, you know it's it good. is delicious. That's how you know it's good when OG breaks her fast. <laughs> You know? But it's like it's super spicy, not super it spicy is? for me. I don't, oh. I don't eat too spicy. But this is so good. Now that I know that it's there, delicious. So easy to stop by on my way home. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, you thank you for it. introducing us to that, Ben. OG, thank you so for good. not I'm bringing food back. I'm going to give Byron back. something. To, Byron, where are you? Byron, seriously? <laughs> Open so up, good. Byron. Yeah, we'll you get know, you some. I can smell it from here. Come on over. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, I told uh, Joe, you know, to go on and get some. So Joe's going to go over here in a second bring us okay. back some. That looks great. Your temperatures look great. You fed Oyibo Pepe. You see the woman sneezing and, and everything. Eh? And then roll off. 
Oh, that was so nice, so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much once again for joining us. Have a wonderful mm -hmm. rest of your day. Thank you so much. <laughs> We're Have so proud day. of you. So, so oh, proud. Thank you. Thank you so Bye. much. Bye, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>